not to narrow things down, but would you say inspiration would be one of the major goals yeah. for for you as an artist? Yeah. Okay. Hillary, can you speak on that? Yeah, that's a very tough question um, because for me, um, I know that with my art, it's not at all a choice. It's something that I have to do. It, I just, you know, most of what you saw on the stage was a product of either dreams that I've had or as I'm falling asleep, I have all of these images of the dancers moving in certain ways. And so when we come to rehearsal, I say, I just need to get it out of my head and onto the stage. Um, and that's what makes me feel whole. That's what gives me a sense of purpose in life. And, and so that's why I feel so passionately about it. Of course, it's so much fun to be up there with my closest friends dancing on a regular basis and we have an amazing time, but it's the process of creating these pieces that is so satisfying to me. And as a science teacher also, that's the, the brain show is actually, you basically just saw one of my seventh grade science lessons turned into a dance um, because I teach all about the human brain and that's how this started. So as I um, process all of the information about how the brain works and as I'm trying to teach it to the, my students, the only way I can think about it is in dance and through movement. So I visualize the whole thing and I was lucky enough to work with a wonderful composer who's here, John Guth, and on that piece we actually collaborated and figured out how to make each piece work and um, that was such an incredibly satisfying experience. And likewise, working with Vincent and Luke on the last piece that you saw, that was, I'd, I'd never done anything like that before, where um, the music was created that was inspired by Luke's work, and then Luke came to us and asked us to create a piece about it. And I, we had never really been commissioned in that way to create a piece that had already been so established. And so that really pushed me, I think, as a choreographer, and the music was so different from anything that we had ever used before. Um, so for me, it's just part of my satisfaction as a human being is creating this stuff. And for everybody, I think it's important that one finds that in their lives. I mean, whether it's just in, in working very hard to create a beautiful meal, or um, going out into the world and doing community service, whatever it is that makes people feel that sense of satisfaction and complete Completion of self, I think, is what everybody needs to find. If they haven't found it yet, they need to go out and do that. Wonderful, thank you. So, just to narrow that down, one fulfills one's own purpose, or one's own vision, or one's own dreams, ultimately. Great, thank you. And Peter, responding. It, uh, uh, both, uh, both the artists uh, on the panel have uh, spoken to uh, effectively the relationship of choice to imperative, uh, uh, saying that well, you, you said so, uh, you, you don't you don't choose to be a choreographer. You, it's it, that, that's who you are, uh, but you do choose uh, to. You make many a myriad choices in putting together uh, your dances, Luke. You you uh, haven't chosen. You actually chose to be an artist because you chose to stop not being an artist. Uh, for, from your biography, I know that, they, that uh, uh, it, w it was in you, you put it aside, and then it came up and, and uh, bit you in all the right places. Uh, and you couldn't deny it anymore. Um, but still, both of you, you could not choose uh, not to be artists, but you can choose how to be how to do the art you do. Uh, similarly, you mentioned that the uh, you say that the brain can be pl uh, in its plastic, plastic, plasticity can be uh, malleable, can tra uh, transfer information from one se segment to to another, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The brain can't choose that. The brain is like that. That's what it does automatically, and uh, so what um, the brain simply chooses how uh, it, uh, that plasticity, how it exercises that plasticity, how in the face of, uh, of uh, damage or, or uh, aging or, uh, or, or simple momentary necessity, uh, information transfers across, uh, across lobes, across set, set, uh, set sectors, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact of the matter is, uh, we don't choose to, none of us is, is chosen to exist. Uh, so that gives us the choice of how to exist, and uh, and the 
act of, that, of art making then is a kind of a, uh, a, a re-expression, a reinterpretation of this existential fact. You know, we don't choose, we, we, we can't choose what, uh, what our brains, however plastic they may be, are telling us uh, we are and what we, and what we do. We can choose, uh, with the help of our brains, obviously, how to do it. So well, if, I, if I may simplify, <laughs> try to simplify what you just said, it, it's, it's this play between the choice and the imperative. What we have to do and what we choose to do, and trying to find that as a purpose. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we're artists, but especially if we are. And, okay. um, and if I may say one thing, because that's, that's what I really try to do with the book, I truly, maybe it's a very romantic idea, but I believe that every single human being has the black box somewhere that has the mission statement in it of what the true inspiration is to be in this life. I think there may be a lot of cement and concrete put on top of it. You may have to use some chisels to find your way back down there, but it's in there, in every one of us. So that, to me, is the mission. And once you are there, I think you stop asking the question about why am I here, because you really put all your attention to doing with what your mission statement told you, just like you observe kids in a sandbox. There's no sense of time there. They're just in that moment, and I think that is the key to that. Once you find your own journey and you map back, time disappears, because you're there where you need to be, you know. Thank you, thank you all.